Hello everyone! So today I'm here to report to you about the speech of um, President Corazon Aquino before the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C., United States. So before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. I am Miss Emmeline G. Hinay. I would like also to acknowledge our instructor, uh, Mr. Rodrigo uh, B. Sumoob. In this lesson, you will learn on how her speech as a president contributed a great impact in the U.S. Congress and in the Philippines. Number two, what is the main purpose of her visit to the U.S.? Number three, how EDSA, People's Power Revolution, installed her into the president position. Before anything else, before I start the presentation, I would like to remind you that this uh, report is uh, for educational purpose only, not to condemn or against anyone. So without further ado, let's dive in into our discussion. President Aquino, speech before the joint session of the United States Congress in September 18, 1986. Almost seven months after she became the president of the Philippines, she delivered a speech before the joint session of the United States Congress. She started her speech and shared her experiences and sorrows for losing a loving husband and a good father of his family. She stated that the years ago, I left. America in grief, to bury my husband, Nino Aquino, I thought I had left it also to lay to rest his restless dream of Philippine freedom. Today, I have returned as the president of a free people. She encouraged to run as president to continue the belief and Nino's advocacy for Philippines democracy. Marcos suspended the Philippines Constitution and shut down the Congress. Ninoy captured together with thousand people, Senate members, publishers, and whoever talked about democracy. In the statement, she is referring to Marcos' many Senate officials in the military and media was against it, including... Ninoy Aquino. It resulted to his arrest. On her speech, she highlighting the cruelty Ninoy has experienced in the hands of the military and the so-called dictator that is referring to then President Ferdinand Marcos. So Benigno Ninoy Aquino was shot and killed in August. 21, 1983, at the Manila International Airport. Upon returning in the Philippines from the U.S. for his health condition and medical surgery, that request was granted and Ninoy was allowed to go in the U.S. together with his entire family. She added on her speech, the dictator had called him a nobody, yet two million people and escorted him to his grave. August 31, 1983, more than two million people attended Ninoy Aquino's 12 hours funeral procession. From this, she detailed how the task to free the Filipinos and fight for democracy fell into her shoulder. In February 22 to 25, 1986, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos gathered on Epifanio de los Santos Avenue on EDSA, facing northbound towards the Boni Serrano Avenue, EDSA intersection. There was a sustained campaign of civil resistance against regime violence and electoral fraud. 
This is known as the EDSA People Power Revolution. The nonviolence revolution led to the departure of President Marcos, resulted to end his 20 years dictatorship and went to Hawaii. Mrs. Corazon Aquino was immediately installed as the 11th President of the Philippines. As the new President of the Philippines, together with Vice President Salvador H. Laurel, she went over some of her plans to restore the government constitutional structures under a constitution that gives full respect to the Bill of Rights, as well as to start reintegration programs for the healing of the different localities in the country. She also acknowledged the $26 billion dollar debt acquired by the Marcos regime. She managed to create negotiation to be able to gradually pay for it. In behalf of the previous administration, and lodged an appeal from the foreigners to further assistance. As her speech neared its end, she recognized and thanked America to their utmost welcome that she, Ninoy, and their children have been received. She invited America to join a new democratic Philippines to be built as the two nations that have a commitment to freedom. The speechwriter of President Corazon Aquino was none other than Teodoro Lopez Luxin Jr., he is a Filipino politician, diplomat, lawyer, and current Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Republic of the Philippines. So, sinulat niya ang speech ni Pangulong Aquino noong pumunta siya sa United States Congress. Sinulat niya yon hindi lamang sa karangalan ng ni Pangulong Aquino kundi pati ang karangalan din ng bansang Pilipinas. The United States Congress approved a 200 million US dollar increased aid and assistance for 1987 alone funds and aid coming from the different countries and the votes for that funds are still voted by the Congress on that same year. is the main purpose of the President Corazon Aquino's visit to the United States was first, she was invited by President Ronald Reagan to visit the country and to negotiate the 26 million US dollar debt from that Philippines had from the Marcos administration. The EDSA People's Power Revolution, along with the defections from the armed forces of the Philippines and support from the Philippines Catholic Church, successfully ousted President Marcos and secured Aquino's accession to the presidency on February 25, 1986. Her speech shows us on how the dictatorship transforms into democratic government from its president down to its laws, order, and rule. Let's read the famous quotes from our 11th president of the Philippines, President Corazon C. Aquino. Says that, as president, I will not betray the cause of peace by which I came to power. Yet equally, and again, no friend of Filipino democracy will challenge this. I will not stand by and allow an insurgent leadership to spurn our offer of peace and kill our young soldiers and threaten our new freedom. From President Corazon C. Aquino, 11th President of the Philippine Republic. 
That's the end of my report. Thank you to our instructor, Mr. Rodrigo Bisomuog.